Uh, so I'm going to quick agenda. I'm going to go over the flexibility of the platform, uh, it, uh, touch on details of disaggregation, uh, an overview of the project, uh, why we built it, uh, some improvements we made, uh, some touch on the serviceability aspects of it, uh, what's coming next, and uh, touch on the OCP open source spirit, and uh, link to some design files in case you want more details on the spec, stuff like that. So first of all, why is flexibility important? So technology is no longer scaling on the historical trends, so new architectures and optimizations uh, are going to be needed to kind of meet our, our needs going forward. So uh, Bryce Canyon is uh, designed as a system to be for flexibility and to reduce the need for full redesigns as you update certain hardware components as your needs scale. Uh, so flexibility and modularity allows for design reuse and allows you to kind of leverage uh, components from other teams or other parts of the industry to allow you to get to market faster or get to your deployments faster. Uh, and we also utilize OCP form factors like OCP MES to allow uh, us to adopt and build it and test the system much faster. Uh, so for disaggregation, so storage capacity is scaling faster than the throughput. So, and, uh, so we're going to need increased uh, network capacity and flexibility of systems to enable uh, disaggregated storage and uh, dense storage servers if uh, integrated compute allows like, lightweight applications to run on the server and then have more uh, higher power services on uh, compute servers elsewhere. Uh, and then robust network infrastructure allows you to make an optimized system uh, for better uh, resource utilization and uh, shared resources on the network. So what is Bryce Canyon? Uh, Bryce Canyon is our 4U uh, desegregated storage uh, JBOD and storage server. So it's in a four open U uh, form factor. Uh, and it lever had leverages uh, the kind of 1P monolake uh, compute card from our, our compute team. Uh, and it has two distinct storage nodes within the, the 4U form factor, uh, each controlling 36 drives or can, can be configured into a JBOD mode as well. Uh, uses the OCP NIC, uh, the front of the chassis, and it's modular and scalable to meet your current and future challenges. So some uh, major system layout of the chassis. So you have a picture of the front and the uh, top view of the chassis. So you can kind of see the, uh, the layout of like the two storage systems within the chassis. So you have uh, one IO card, one uh, compute card, one storage controller card, and each of those control 36 drives in the system. So the uh, kind of separated in the front of the system and the back of the system, uh, side one or two, front and back, however you want to call it. Uh, so you have uh, the I.O. card, which has the, the NIC on it, and the board manager controller, which then goes to the compute card. And then PCIe goes to the storage controller card, which then fans out to the drive, er, to the drive plane board to the, to the hard drives. So pretty much you have, the only shared plane between this in the system is the drive plane board so for, uh, for a shared uh, power distribution. Um, so within that, you have the drive plane board and the mono lake. Uh, so the Monolake is our compute card. It's a 16-core Broadwell DE uh, CPU on a 1P form factor from our compute team, uh, 32 gigs of DRAM, and has a spot for M.2 boot drive. And the uh, drive plane board uh, has a couple neat details in it. So one, it's broken into uh, two pieces, uh, mostly because you can't fabricate a panel that big like at a lot of manufacturers. And we were able to do a kind of nifty trick by having an uh, air bypass coming underneath the chassis. So you can see in the middle, uh, you have uh, places where cold air can come up and mix for the back 36 drives to allow um, colder air to mix with the back drive so you don't have as much thermal shattering. Uh, so on the, in the back of the chassis, you have uh, four 92 millimeter uh, counter rotating fans. You have the power entry where we have a cable track that allows the entire system to roll out from the chassis. And that allows everything to be powered so you can service one half of the chassis without taking the other one down. Uh, so you have uh, the connector for the storage controller card. Uh, you have uh, and the slots for the 1P microservers, and at the front you have the connector for the I.O. cards that has the BMC and NIC. So going to the so control, uh, storage controller card, there's uh, two different flavors or configurations. So uh, for both uh, warm storage and cold storage. So if you want to run in the, in the typical warm storage mo uh, mode where you have the compute within the chassis, you have an IOC as well as an expander. And that uh, basically you have the PCIe coming from the compute card to the IOC on the bottom right of the left card to the expander, which then fans out all the SAS to the 36 drives. We also have a four lanes of 12 gig SAS uh, cable to the front top connector. So you can, in a cold storage or JBOD configuration, 
you can have the, uh, the expander-only uh, storage controller card so you can cable in and treat the entire system as a JBOD and not have the compute inside, depending on your workload. So uh, the IO module, or, or IOM as we call it, uh, also has two different configurations for warm storage on the left and cold storage on the right. So for warm storage, uh, both of them share the same uh, format having the OCP NIC, either 25 or 50 gig have, has the, uh, the BMC running OpenBMC, uh, also a Facebook uh, project, uh, has the TPM module. And then on the right side, you either have uh, two, two M.2 flashcards supporting either 80 millimeter or 110 millimeter format for additional flash capacity. And then the uh, cold storage revision has, a, has an uh, SAS IOC so that you can cable down to JBOD configured chassis, all configured within the same chassis without having to redesign the entire chassis for each configuration. You just plug whatever module makes sense. So why did we build Bryce Canyon? Uh, so Bryce Canyon is a dense modular designed to accommodate different uh, deployment configurations within a single chassis, supporting both our warm storage and cold storage configurations without uh, different chassis designs. So you have the same parts, just a different card plugging in for whatever flavor you want to deploy. Uh, there's a lot of attention de uh, to enhance serviceability for all the major components, both for service time and ease of use of like uh, identifying the item to be serviced and ha being completely toolless so it's painless for anyone to uh, support like thousands of these in a data center. Uh, so we also, as I mentioned before, leverage the existing microservers from our compute team to allow design reuse. And then uh, for improved system performance, we have a higher amount of compute than our previous designs for higher performance, as well as uh, reduced uh, RVAV for the, the dense drive cha drives in the chassis, and uh, increased or decreased CFM per watt for uh, better cooling efficiency in the data center. Uh, so how does it compare to a previous Honey Badger chassis? Uh, so we basically improved a lot of aspects, not only the, the system side, but its performance, uh, like four, four times the amount of compute for, per drive, uh, increased DRAM, uh, less power consumption per drive slot, and a be, a, about a 50% reduction in CFM per watt for the entire chassis, which is huge for a forced air cooling data center like Facebook. Uh, so some uh, improvements on the hard drive performance, this specifically towards uh, effects of like RV and AV <coughs> within the system. So uh, some of the, this is more commenting on the updates to the chassis from our initial revision versus when we now are in production. Uh, dense chassis have a lot of problems with RV, so like drives vibrating and reducing performance of the, the neighbors, like physically noisy neighbors, I suppose. <laughs> uh, and then you also have uh, acoustic vibrations from the fans that can affect the, the seeking of the heads on the hard drives to affect their, their performance. So we did a lot of, our system engineers, thermal and mechanical engineers, did a lot of work to optimize the chassis, especially the, the back row of the drives that, if, that were most affected by the AV uh, performance. So they were able to go from like 5% in continuous operation degradation and up to like 100% degradation in the worst slot under uh, non-sustained operation. So that's like, uh, chassis pulled out high temperature and like fans missing, and fans 100% PWM, so there's a lot of noise. So with the improvements that we, I'll go over the next slide, we're able to get uh, uh, down to worst case 1% degradation in continuous and 2.3% in uh, non-sustained with 100% PWM. So how did we do that? Uh, so a couple different things in the uh, mechanical and uh, thermal design of the chassis. Uh, we uh, changed the, the fan guard on the, the fans that are near the back row of drives. So before it was like stamped sheet metal, it was like much more like not only sharp, but like had like sharp and like flat corners and edges that kind of uh, increased the acoustic vibrations coming from the fan as it pulled the air through that. So we moved to like a more wi uh, like kind of wire shaped traditional fan guard, which really reduced some noise combined with uh, modifying the physical shape of the, the blades on the fans which also reduced the acoustic noise coming from them. And then we also added a neat little thing uh, that we call acoustic attenuator at the back of the chassis, which is like a honeycomb mesh that you see in like a lot of uh, composites. And that really uh, reduced the, like attenuated the acoustic noise coming from the fan coupling to the hard drives. And those uh, things combined allow us to really reduce the hard drive uh, degradation, especially under uh, high PWM of the fans. Uh, so for system thermal improvements, uh, compared to our previous chassis, we went down from uh, like about 0 0.3 CFM per watt at 30 degrees Celsius down to, down to 0 0.122 CFM per watt for the whole on the rack level. So there was a great, like a huge uh, decrease in CFM requirements to cool the, the, the system as a whole. So this allows us to deploy more racks and need less cooling in the data center. And additional improvements also uh, 
allowed us to increase our service time for most of the components. So because you have the system operating when you pull it out of the chassis, you have a lot of air, air bypass, you have a lot of uh, different things that you don't have in, in normal operation. So you have to worry about things overheating, things uh, uh, like, like basically things overheating as the system is pulled out. So we added a lot of attention to uh, baffling and uh, reducing bypass to allow uh, service components to be able to have 20 minutes to uh, service most components under ambient conditions without the system having to go into thermal shutdown. Uh, so how do we do that? Um, uh, so underneath the chassis where you have the cold air bypass, on the bo bottom left we have an additional air baffle to reduce bypass uh, to allow more air to continuously go into that center mixing channel on the hard drives. Uh, we also added a mylar sheet and a foam sponge on the hard drive latches, which also like, reduced uh, bypass coming in the top of the chassis when the tray is pulled out by a lot. And all of these combined uh, basically allowed us to go up to 20 minutes of service time under ambient conditions in high temperature. Uh, so you have a appropriate amount of time to debug and uh, repair your chassis without taking the whole system down, especially because you have like a captive host with uh, two systems within one chassis. So these kind of improvements really helped uh, deployment uh, stability. Uh, some additional mechanical improvements we did. Uh, so we increased the safety factor on the extension rails. So you mean you have 72 hard drives and all the other like compute and other cards within the chassis, so it weighs a lot, not to mention the actual chassis itself. So through a lot of uh, clever like mechanical optimizations, we were able to bring the chassis weight down to 198 uh, pounds fully populated. And then we also uh, did uh, testing and modifications to the rail to allow about 300 pounds at the front of the chassis when it's fully pulled out. So that way if you're like servicing and fall on it, grab on it, it's not gonna just like crumple and fall. So safety is important. <laughs> Uh, so we also improved uh, the toolless lastage for most of the components. Uh, so basically everything is really is serviceable and accessible that needs to be serviced within a couple minutes and re like fully replaced without having to like use screws or, or like uh, a lot of like time consuming things where you may drop components or need special tools and that kind of increases throughput for uh, repairs in the field. Uh, so we also improved the uh, drive plane replacement. So one of the biggest boards in the system it has a lot of interconnections. So Typical, lots of chassis, if you have to replace the drive plane board, you spend a lot of time uh, like basically doing like undoing lots of screws, undoing like all the components just to replace the drive plane board. So what we were able to do is uh, allow you to just kind of lift all the hard drives up so they kind of sit in like a, there's kind of like a spring support in, built into the hard drive latch that allows the hard drives to kind of sit up without having to remove them fully. And then you take out all the compute card and SEC. And then when the system is fully, fully pulled out, you can undo four thumb, uh, thumb screws at the bottom, kind of slide the drive plane forward, drop it, and then you can replace it all within like 10 minutes. So it's much quicker to kind of bring a system back up if there's any issues or you're trying to debug any uh, kind of problems in the field. Uh, and also improvements in uh, like robustness for shock and vibration during shipping, because uh, we integrate a racks and ship the full rack. So you have to worry about having all that weight in the chassis as it's being shipped. Uh, so some other comments on like the uh, better latches for the NIC. Uh, so instead of having screws or like a really stiff like uh, push latches, we have uh, these little uh, kind of little spring latches that hold the NIC down on the IOM. Uh, kind of single finger uh, uh, spring latches for the SSD, and uh, the SCC latches uh, were also improved to allow quick serviceability without uh, like having any issues with strength or retention and without having dev screws. So you have to no tools which is great, it helps a lot for the data center technicians. Uh, so talk a bit more about the deployment flexibility. Uh, so the modular design allows us to like, update the compute card, the NICs, NVMe drives, expander card, depending on if you want to like, change technologies or vendor, vendors or just update the module. Uh, the kind of modularity allows you to do that very easily uh, without having to redesign the whole system. Uh, the system is also configurable so that you can have uh, the, the warm storage, cold storage configuration. So on the right, you can see uh, the cold storage head node configuration of Bryce Canyon uh, with the SAS cable down to the JBOD uh, configuration of the chassis so that you can uh, just uh, adding a couple cables and swapping out some cards uh, is the only difference to make a configure a chassis versus cold storage or warm storage for like a head node versus a JBOD. So it allows you to like reduce the amount of parts you need uh, and then you don't need to you can kind of integrate the systems a lot quicker without having to stock a lot of different components. Uh, and then like the modular subsystem also allows you to update certain components or certain cards if you want to change media or technologies or if uh, performance requirements change. 
Uh, so what's next? So a lot of things are going to, like as we've learned and deployed, like this is our kind of whole revolutionary refresh of our hard drive storage platform. We previously had Honey Badger. Uh, so as we've learned, we're going to improve a lot of like mechanical and thermal things from things we've learned in the data center, some of which you've seen in this presentation. Uh, update compute modules based on uh, performance requirements or CPU roadmaps. Uh, update to accommodate future drive technologies if necessary. And then just basically incorporate any feedback from our data center technicians and our lessons from mass deployment and manufacturing. So I also want to have a quick note on the open, open, source, open source spirit. Uh, so like OCP is a very powerful community, which is why you're all here. Uh, so like the more everyone participates and engages and asks questions and gives feedback, kind of allows everyone to kind of increase design quality and design uh, flex, uh, kind of uh, yeah, attention to the design and stuff as we all scale so that we can all leverage our, each other's uh, effort and experience and get uh, a better systems overall in the industry and help steer suppliers and, st and steer each other to kind of get uh, better collaboration throughout the industry. So please join and participate more in OCP because it helps us all. Uh, and if you, ever want, if you want to get more details on the design, uh, you can go to the OCP website for the design package and spec. And uh, there's a link to the OpenBMC project uh, for OpenBMC as well. So thank you for attending the presentation. And let me know if you have any questions. <laughs>